Hey everyone, this is Martin from HowToMakeMobileGames.com on December the 22nd, 2016, I believe. I do this every time. Thursday, uh, here in Manchester, England again, and it's kind of early for me, even though it is half 12 in the afternoon. Uh, that's why I'm kind of looking a bit messy now. I've not like, done my hair or made myself pretty this morning, so sorry about that. You'll have to bear with the image. Uh, this video is about... Uh, developing the procedural puzzle game that I'm now working on and planning to hopefully have us release pretty soon, uh, at least version one. So uh, just to give you some background on this, the past, um, since I've moved back to England, uh, which was in October, um, I started to focus more full-time work again on developing games in Unity for the company. And uh, one of the games that I... Uh, uh, let me back up a second. So we developed a bunch of games before from like say platformers to FPS and uh, I decided to try and do something that was more of a puzzle game and also was procedural as well uh, because I wanted to build something that had unlimited content basically you know it, it just procedural content if you're not sure what that means it means that the content is created by the code uh, during runtime on the fly so you have say like a, I think it's what's the um, a Kaplunky Kaplunk is it not Kaplunk Spelunky that's the game that's a procedural platformer game from what I understand uh, so it's a each level is completely different each time there's unlimited levels as far as I'm aware and it just goes on and on and on and that's procedural game generation or procedural level creation and that's great because it means that the user has unlimited content so that's what I've been trying to do I'll, I'll jump in right now and show you basically what I've been uh, doing um, so and then I'll talk through the code a little bit I'll go back to the world select screen so that you can see um, so this uh, this idea I had a well god it must have been a couple of years ago that I, I wanted to do this and I actually did this when I was in I started this project when I was in South China in a town called Longjiang for about a year and because I was busy mainly doing managing stuff I didn't continue it but it's been great for me to get back into coding and start to build stuff again so you know obviously this is work in progress it might be an early version one and then update the the visuals and and the features in the game as it goes um, but there's the world select screen. I'll just actually I'll go back to world one so that you can see what's going on uh, So that I can play it easily actually So yeah world one start uh, 20 I've got 20 levels in each world currently I'll go back to the first one just to show you and all it is real simple is just a I'll turn down the volume on the screen. So it's just um, a puzzle connect game. So you have to swap the values in the white cells so that all of the lines and the columns uh, equal the the totals that are in the white cells. So for example here 2 plus 1 is 3 so it's red. What we have to do is swap the cells so that these two equal 2, these two equal 3, these the top line equals 3 and it's green so it's already correct and then the bottom one 1 plus 1 is already 2 so it's green it's already correct. So if it's green it's correct, if it's red it's wrong. So all I have to do is click on the blue one, boom, swap over, and then it's all green, highlighted, and then level complete. Uh, that's been done. So it's got a moves left counter as well. Click the screen, go to the next level, and there you go. So a next level completely random. Uh, even though you know it's only the values are only one and two right now, but it is completely random. Uh, uh, as in the numbers are random, and then the randomization of those numbers. Uh, in the board are also random as well and this beginning world is very very simple I mean I say I say it's simple I tested it with a friend last night so hey John if you're watching uh, I tested it with a friend and um, it was interesting it's always interesting to test with new users who have never played the game before um, because you get to see how stuff that you take for granted in the game how to play it uh, they don't know they you know people will like try to, to try to uh, drag the cells as opposed to click on them um, they they try to drag on the answer cells here which are not draggable I'm clicking on them now and you can't move them at all so it has to be very there has to be a very good tutorial scene in this uh, I have to make that soon um, and this world one even though I find it pretty easy now obviously because I've been playing this for weeks and weeks now um, 
it's not easy for new players at all. It, it, so it's got to be very gradual, just starting with the random numbers between 1 and 2. Yeah, this is World 2 and you can see the grid size in, increases. So it's now a 2x3 board uh, and each world it increases. So 3x3, 3, 3x4, 3 4x4, 4x5, 5x5 and it increases to a maximum of 6x7. Um, but then the next world is also 6x7. World 11, it's capped at a 6x7 board but the random numbers continue to get higher and higher, so the difficulty increases, so it is, you know, indefinite, infinite levels, I should say. So, um, there you go, so these are pretty easy, but like I say, for new players, they don't find it that easy. Uh, there's a moves, left a moves left counter there as well, as you can see. So, if I just click and then reduce the moves left, you can see number, sorry, I clicked too fast there. If I go to the last one, no more no more moves, tap to retry level and it reloads the level. So UI has to be changed, that pop-up that you just seen has to be changed as well. But visually I think I'm pretty close to uh, you know releasing a version one. I'll show you it playing in the Unity editor as well and I'll, I'll look at some code in a moment and share with you guys. If I click on play. Sorry, I'm just having my tea before it gets too cold. So, um, the uh, visually, so the main the, these buttons here are just cubes, and I'm using a raycast to um, project into the world and see which button is being tapped, and then reacting to that. Uh, this background here is a um, a plane in Unity, so I created a great a game object, a three D object, a plane wherever it is there. Um, uh, actually, that in fact that one's been created by something else, hasn't it? It was created by create other than custom plane. Yeah, so that was a script that I downloaded um, from another user off one of the forums uh, and allowed me to create a, a plane with a certain amount of segments and I can't remember what the width and the height, the height is. But this has a purling noise um, uh, generator or function on it, so all it is is just, if I can click on it, am I clicking on it? Oh yeah, yeah, there we go. So all it is is just a couple of scripts. One is the the purling noise through this wave scripts here, which is causing that wavy effect as, as it's going. Um, the generate terrain, this is actually misnamed. I need to combine these scripts into one. But one of them is, uh, from what I understand, it's resetting the normals on each vertice or something, or each vertex. Something like that. I'm not sure. That's the thing. I've got these scripts here, but I don't know exactly how they work. They just happen to work, and I was like, okay, great. Uh, but each frame, it's recalculating the normals, and it's not sharing the normals. I had this this no shared vertices here. I need to read up on exactly how that works, but the purling noise causes that wavy effect. That's updated every frame, and then the normals are recalculated every frame, so that uh, and uh, so that you get that. Uh, and the, the, the vertices or normals are not shared so that you get this flat shading effect, which is what I was going for. So there you go. So you can see, you know, there's a directional light in there. And I, w I got inspiration from um, uh, Monument Valley on that one. So that's where that came from. And then the fade up plane as well, which is a Unity UI plane, just activated by an animation. And then that plane actually loads the different scenes as well. So when the fade up is... Um, is reached to a value of 1.0, so it's fully opaque. It then calls the event inside the script attached to that game object. Uh, so the animation editor calls that event, that uh, function, and then it loads the next scene, and then the, the next scene starts. And all it does is automatically that background white plane will uh, activate when the scene loads, and the plane will and the fade will come down. So and that happens in every in every scene, and that was just a prefab. Uh, uh, where was it now? The level start finish fade plane. So trying to keep it as simple as possible, as I you know, because what I'm trying to do with this game is I'm trying to do something which is a bit more polished, as I discussed in one of the I think it was the last video. I'm trying to make something which is not huge, but just fun, polished, something that I would play, and I do play this. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to build it is because I do play this game. Personally, I enjoy, I enjoy IQ or maths-based puzzles, you know, patterns, things like that. Um, and I have been enjoying this one as well. I don't think it's mass audience, though. That's the thing. I don't, for sure, it's not mass audience. Um, most people will not like this type of game. Um, so I've got to 
it's going to be very niche, very targeted, people who enjoy numbers, because you've got to add the rows, uh, the lines and the columns yourself. So I've, for example here, I've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, So and that's nine, so I need to add one from somewhere. I'll take it from there, there you go. And you can do diagonal drags as well, that was the other thing. You can, you can click from any point, so um, it doesn't have to be on the same line or the same column. Uh, but this one is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that right? Yeah, eight. So I need to reduce by one. So I'll click on that one there. There you go. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. So that I need to increase by one. So I'll grab a two. Boom. There you go. All done. So, uh, and as I said, you can you can swap values from different corners and different positions and all that. So, you know, it's not just um, not just the immediate left to right and up and down. So that was another thing as well. When my friend was testing last night, he, he didn't realize that you could click diagonal as well. Um, all of these worlds are unlocked, but I'll, I'll just show you quickly like the increase. Uh, what's going on? <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> what did I click? Uh, I don't know why that happened. Why did it go to the script editor, the, script editor, the, the mono develop? I don't know. Anyway, I'm just unlocking a new scene here and it's just... This is for debugging these two red things. So if I go to, I'll just show you world 10 right now. So world 10 is the maximum size of the board. So it has to be capped because of obviously mobile screens. Uh, you could zoom the camera out, but then the buttons would be so small.